Hi everyone, I'm Ian Atkinson with NASA Spaceflight. Welcome to this week's Starship Update video. As always, big thanks to Mary at Boca Chica Gal on Twitter. She's a Boca Chica resident and NSF team member who tirelessly documents Starship development every single day. All of the following photos and videos are from her, unless otherwise noted. Thanks, Mary. This week, the facility was moving full steam ahead, with work underway on at least eight separate Starship prototypes and one Super Heavy booster. Starship Serial Number 8 was the star of the show, with work continuing ahead of its upcoming 15-kilometer hop. On Monday, we saw Raptor SN42 being installed into SN8, replacing Raptor SN32. Raptor SN32 was damaged the previous week during SN8's third static fire test and was later removed. This marks the second engine replacement for SN8. On Tuesday, Elon Musk gave an update on the anomalous static fire. During the dual Raptor firing, several small pieces of bright debris were seen being ejected away from the pad site. Minutes later, Elon tweeted that control of the vehicle's pneumatics were lost. This was a major concern, since SN8 still had a large amount of propellants on board. Luckily, a burst disc, which is a thin metal sheet designed to break at a certain pressure, ruptured, releasing tank pressure and preventing a nasty pop. In his tweet on Tuesday, Elon elaborated and said that the loss of pneumatics was caused by shattered pieces of martite, a type of thermal protection used on the launch pad, being ejected from the pad and cutting an avionics cable. When the cable was cut, Raptor SN32 performed a bad shutdown and was damaged in the process. What seemed like molten metal, but could have just been backlit hydraulic fluid, we're not sure, was seen pouring from the engine seconds later. This then prompted the engine swap, and it's probably safe to say we won't be seeing Raptor SN32 again. While we don't know exactly what's next for Starship SN8, on Friday, three days of road closures were published for November 30th through December 2nd. The closure request document had a pretty clear title, SN8 15 km hop. Now we'll just have to wait and see what further testing SpaceX chooses to perform prior to the hop, and if the current schedule even holds at all. Just a few hundred feet away from SN8, work is progressing on the orbital launch mount. Crews are preparing to pour large amounts of concrete, possibly for the future propellant farm. This follows several deliveries of prefabricated concrete structures, called box culverts, over the past few weeks. Back at the production site, construction of Starship Serial No. 9 is nearing the end. The lower tank section of SN9, sporting rear flaps and a hefty array of 73 thermal protection tiles, the most ever seen on any Starship so far, had a nice stroll around the facility on Monday and Tuesday. SpaceX placed the tank section onto their new Starship transporter, composed of four connected roll lift vehicles, on Monday. I don't know if it's just me, but this mega roll lift definitely seems like SpaceX's take on NASA's twin crawler transporters at Kennedy Space Center. It'll be fun to see how they use it in the future. SN9 was then returned to its home in the high bay on Tuesday. SN9's nose cone received both of its flaps this week, with the first installed on Thursday, and the second early Friday morning. The five ring barrel section, which makes up the bottom half of a complete nose cone, has been moved into the windbreak. It now seems like nose cone stacking could occur in the next few days. Inside the mid-bay, stacking of Starship serial number 11 continued, with the forward dome being added on top on Wednesday. Now, this only leaves the engine section and aft skirt to be added before SN11 becomes a complete Starship. Well, a complete Starship tank section, that is. In addition, parts for several future Starships were spotted. On Wednesday, SN15's common dome barrel section was sighted outside. Also, the methane header tank for Starship SN13 was seen on Friday outside tent number one. It's so cool to me to see how far ahead they are in Starship production. I wonder what else they have hidden inside the production tents, or even hidden out in plain sight without any labels on them. Recently, several unknown forward and aft domes have appeared outside at the production site. In this picture from NSF forum member Nomad, three such domes can be seen outside, with another hiding inside tent number two. It's interesting to note that the left aft dome features external bracing, like all previous ones, while the one on the right does not. And that's it for this week. 
Thanks for watching and thanks for your support. If you like this video and like to see more, consider subscribing and hitting the like button. It really does help a lot. And if you'd like to support what we do, we have a merch store with t-shirts and other cool NSF gear. And there's also the YouTube membership program with unique perks like access to our members only Discord channel and access to preview clips before the daily videos are published. And as always, these weekly update videos are a work in progress, so let us know what you think in the comments. With your help and feedback, we're able to make each release of the series even better than the one before. And finally, thanks to Mary for the amazing photos and videos of Starship development. See you guys next week, and to our American viewers, have a happy, safe, and socially distanced Thanksgiving.